Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now in this video, we will be going to discuss the mandible bone, which is a bone of head and neck region. Uh, it is present in the skull. So let's get started with the mandible. This bone is mandible. A mandible is the bone of facial skeleton and it forms its lower part. The lower facial skeleton is formed by mandible. <coughs> mandible is also called as the bone of lower jaw. The lower jaw is formed by mandible alone. This bone is used for mastication that is for the chewing of mouth and that's why its name is mandible. It is derived from a Greek word which is called as mandare and mandare means to masticate. Now mandible is the largest and strongest bone of the facial skeleton. It is the, one of the largest bone and also it is the strongest bone. Mandible is very strong as it is used for masticatory processes. Also whole of the threshold which is applied when one slaps on mouth is to be bear by mandible alone. Mandible hi sari maal jhelti hai jab thapar padta hai. <laughs> Jokes apart, it is one of the largest and strongest bone of our facial skeleton. <clears throat> now it is so strong that in uh, the indigenous Americans used the lower jaw, the mandible of some animals to make weapons also in the previous times. So it is very strong. Now coming to the features of mandible, the mandible consists of a body, this one, and two quadrilateral like uh, plates which are called as ramus of mandible. So this U-shaped or horseshoe shaped structure is the body and these plates like structures are the ramus of mandible present on both the side of body. So this is the shape of mandible. Now coming to body we will take uh, features or the parts one by one. This is the body the U-shaped structure. The body as you can see is having two borders the upper border and the lower border and two surfaces the external surface and the internal surface i repeat two borders this one and this one and two surfaces this surface and this surface now the borders first of all this border is the upper border also called as alveolar border and it pierces sockets for the tooth of lower jaw to encroach here. So this whole border is called as alveolar process of mandible. The teeth of lower jaw are present on it and this uh, the part of mandible enclosing the teeth is covered by mucoperiosteum. The lower border that is this one is called as base of mandible the lower border is also called as base of mandible and on this border two depressions are present which are called as digastric fossa these depressions are called as digastric fossa onto the base of mandible the investing layer of deep cervical fascia is attached the platysma is inserted and from these digastric fossas this one the anterior belly of digastric muscle takes origin the anterior belly of digastric muscle takes origin from the digastric fossa after that we come to the outer surface of mandible now you can see on the outer surface this line is present in the midline this line is called as symphysis menti now its nomenclature the symphysis menti is a misnomer as symphysis is used for cartilaginous joint the secondary cartilaginous joint but here this is not a joint it is just a line of fusion between the two halves of the body of mandible and it is called as symphysis menti so it is a misnomer this line this line is symphysis menti where this line is ending a triangular protuberance like structure is present which is called as mental protuberance. This triangular structure, the mental protuberance, in common language we called it as chin. On the sides of mental protuberance, 
two tubercles are present which are called as mental tubercles now coming on the side of external surface we can see a foramen this foramen is called as mental foramen the mental nerves and vessels exit from this foramen onto the lower onto the face then when we run back to the mental foramen we see a faint line coming from this prominent line downwards this line is called as anterior oblique line this anterior oblique line gives origin to depressor labia inferioris depressor anguli oris and the buccinator muscle now beneath the incisors of the lower jaw a slight depression is present in anterior to the mental foramen this depression is called as incisive fossa and from it slips of mentalis muscle and orbicularis oculi muscle takes origin after that we go to the internal surface this is the internal surface on the internal surface we will see again a line and this line is called as mylohyoid line the mylohyoid line is coming from behind the third molar like this and extending like this beneath this mylohyoid line a slight groove is present which is called as mylohyoid groove now this line divides the internal surface into two fossas a fossa which is present superior to the line this one and a fossa which is present inferior to this line this one on here above the line the sublingual gland is related to the mandible and below the line here the submandibular gland is related now this line mylohyoid line gives origin to mylohyoid muscle and in the groove beneath the line mylohyoid nerves and vessels are present now behind the mylohyoid line where it finishes on near to the ramus of mandible here the superior constrictor muscle of pharynx some fibers of it are taking origin from here and near the alveolar process behind the third molar here the pterygomandibular raphe is attached between the mylohyoid line and the superior constrictor muscle another nerve is associated which is called as lingual nerve so these are the structures present on the on the internal surface of body now just behind the symphysis menti anteriorly posteriorly four small tubercles are present two upper and two below which are called as genial tubercles two upper and two lower the upper one gives origin to genioglossus muscle and the lower one gives origin to geniohyoid muscle as the tongue is present superiorly so genioglossus above and the hyoid bone is present inferiorly so geniohyoid muscle below the ramus of mandible is a quadrilateral uh, quadrilateral plate like structure it is having two surfaces four borders and two processes now you can see this surface which is the outer and in continuation with the external surface of the body is called at its as its lateral surface or external surface this surface which is in continuation with the inner surface is called as its medial surface or inner surface this is the superior border this is the anterior border continuous with the alveolar border of mandible this is the posterior border and inferior border is in continuation or blended with the base of mandible this one and the two processes this anterior process which is pointed and triangular in shape is called as coronoid process and the posterior process which has an upper rounded head like structure is the condylar process also called as condyloid process now looking at the surfaces processes and borders first of all this process this process is the coronoid process it is present anterior to the uh, condylar process is triangular in shape and its anterior border is continuous with the anterior border of the ramus of mandible 
now this process is giving insertion to one of the muscle of mastication like this and that is the temporalis muscle the temporalis muscle is inserted onto this process and it extends onto the anterior border also the condylar process condylar process is having a rounded head like structure and below the head the constricted portion is present which is called as neck of the process on the anterior aspect of the neck a depression is present which is called as pterygoid fovea this depression now on to the pterygoid fovea the lateral pterygoid muscle another muscle of mastication is inserted here the lateral pterygoid muscle now this head articulates with the temporal bone to form temporomandibular joint which is a condylar type of synovial joint and as it is a synovial joint capsule is attached onto the margins of this head like structure on the lateral aspect of neck here the lateral temporomandibular ligament of the same joint is attached here on the medial aspect of neck the maxillary artery and auricular temporal nerve are related okay so on the lateral aspect lateral ligament of temporomandibular joint on the anterior aspect lateral pterygoid muscle is inserted on the edges the capsule of the joint and on the medial side auricular temporal nerve and maxillary artery are related now the border which is present between the two processes is notch like and it is it is called as the mandibular notch on to the mandibular notch the mesarthric nerves and vessels are passing now the posterior border this one this is the posterior border and it is continuous with the base of mandible at this junction which is called as the angle of mandible this point is called as angle of mandible now the external surface the surface is first of all the external surface the posterior superior part of external surface is related to the parotid gland so all the three salivary glands are related to the mandible the parotid gland is related here on the rest of the surface the masseter muscle which is the very strong muscle of mastication is inserted here on most of the portion of the external surface of ramus of mandible then we come to the internal surface on the internal surface we can see a foramen which is leading into a canal this foramen is called as mandibular foramen mandibular foramen is leading into mandibular canal which is going inside the body of mandible now through this mandibular foramen the inferior alveolar nerves and vessels enter through this the inferior alveolar nerves and vessels enter into the mandibular foramen then into the canal on the front or the uh, of this foramen a tongue like projection is present which is called as lingula on this lingula the sphenomandibular ligament is attached this is the ligament of tmj the temporomandibular joint the sphenomandibular ligament is attached on this lingula then on to the angle of mandible the stylomandibular ligament is attached tmj is having four ligaments stylomandibular is attached here the sphenomandibular on to the lingula the lateral ligament on to the lateral aspect of neck and the capsule on the boundaries of head then behind the mandibular foramen near the angle of mandible at this place the fourth muscle of mastication which is the medial pterygoid is inserted here then in front to the attachment of medial pterygoid muscle we will see again the mylohyoid groove which was seen with the body mylohyoid nerves and vessels are passing through it so this is all about the mandible i will repeat the important structures quickly first of all the mandible is giving insertion to all the four muscles of mastication the masseter on the external surface of the ramus of mandible here 
the temporalis onto the coronoid process and the anterior border of the ramus the lateral pterygoid on the lateral uh, pterygoid fovea and the medial pterygoid on the inner surface of the ramus of mandible apart from this other muscles are also attaching but the muscles of mastication are most important then all the three salivary glands the parotid gland onto the posterior superior aspect of the ramus the sublingual gland on the part present above the mylohyoid line the submandibular gland on the part present below the mylohyoid line then the ligaments which are attaching on mandible the stylomandibular ligament on the angle of mandible the sphenomandibular ligament on the lingula the capsule of the tmj on the margins of the head lateral ligament of temporomandibular joint on the lateral aspect of neck of coronoid uh, condylar process and the pterygomandibular raphe which is present uh, posterior to the third molar tooth here so these are the ligaments which are attaching on the mandible then the nerves and vessels which are related to the mandible first of all on the mesateric uh, uh, mandibular notch the mesateric nerves and vessels on the medial aspect of neck of condylar process the auriculotemporal nerve and the maxillary artery then the inferior alveolar nerve and vessels pass through the mandibular foramen they run through the mandibular canal and give small branches to the root of all the teeth then the mental nerve and vessel exit through the mental foramen the mylohyoid nerves and vessels are passing through the mylohyoid groove then the lingual nerve which is rela uh, related between the mylohyoid line and the superior constrictor muscle attachment here lingual nerve is associated or related then on the anterior aspect at the anterior border of masseter here the facial nerves and vessels are passing on to the face so they are also related here uh, facial vessel sorry not facial nerve the facial artery and vein they are passing on to the face and facial vein is coming downwards so it is present anterior to the anterior border of masseter so also related to the base of mandible here mental nerves and vessels are passing through this so these are the structures and important points of mandible hope you all like the video it is clear to you the attachment as mandible is very important in the head and neck section of gross anatomy osteology of gross anatomy thank you so much for watching the video Please like, share and subscribe my channel if you like my video. Thank you.